Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special treat for you up here, as we have our, every day. We've had Alan Bach right here with us, and also today we've got the world champ, Jade Corkill. Y'all give him a hand right here. All right, all right. How's good it going, morning. guys? Y'all doing good? Yep. Good. Jade, Clay Trine has been here, your partner. He's been with us a couple of mornings, and we've been asking him, how's your NFR going so far? Talk about your runs you've had. Uh, it's been going. We'll, ch we'll do a check here. Try it. Try it one more time. Hello? Oh, let's yeah, see if we're on right here. Yeah, it looks like it. We're pretty laid back here, so. Hey, by the way, you guys, if you have any questions, after we talk a little bit about breaking roping down, we'll open it up for questions. So anything that you've ever thought you might want to ask Jade or whatever, be thinking about that. I got a few questions for him, too. Yeah, yeah we'll use that. Tell us about your runs, buddy. Uh, it's felt pretty good so far. The the steers uh, the first night were supposed to be the stronger pin usually, and uh, the way they are the last two years compared to how they've been in the past that I've been here is uh, they're a little bit bigger there and a little bit stronger. And uh, when they're like that, and you know, in a in a small arena like this, when they hit. Let's move over this way. Come right over here. When, uh, when they hit, it seems like they, they hit a little farther down the arena right. than, than usual. And uh, what's especially hard over here is if you get a little, you know, when you come across there, if you get a little too inside, you can kind of hang them on the end of it to where right. you never really can get around them. And then there's the deal where if you try to get around them, the angle that they hit when those guys have to come back so fast, it can almost like pull them back by right. to the right. Like the first night I thought, I got just a little bit straight behind, which is fine with me, but I was aiming for a little bit farther sure. inside than I actually got. Yeah. And then uh, the second night, I actually got where I wanted to get, <clears throat> and uh, that, that was just as, as routine of a shot as, yeah. as I've ever had, and uh, just kind of a weird deal with my slack when I come down with it, come right down in between my horse's ears, and uh, I'd never, I've never had that happen before. And right. I couldn't really tell, you know, in the moment, it didn't feel like anything. You know, I can usually tell if something's off or if something is going right. wrong. It looked and, pretty smooth, you and, know. And uh, all I could come up with was it was just kind of right in the moment when Clay was starting yep. to come back. And so that's why last night I decided to, I was going to try to get a little farther down the arena to where I thought the first two nights when the steers hit, like when he pulled them away the first jump, I was still kind of, that's when I started to push to him. And then where last night I felt like I kind of, I beat the steer kind of like I got far enough down the arena to where when he hit, mm -hmm. I was already waiting for it. So then when he pulled him away, right, I could kind of come off it and create my own separation. And uh, sure, it felt like a lot easier shot. So. What were you thinking? You know, and it's so important. You know, when you got your dally, and when and you realized, you know, that where the rope was, you know, on your second steer there, and and you know, you've got two feet. You made a great shot. You know, and everything was going perfectly. But what are you thinking when you're sitting there stirring, you know, and ropes sliding and, and backing up? What was going through your mind there? Well, I kind of, I think what kind of saved me was I almost got, like, I got halfway around right. when I started to come around second time right before I was really close to getting the dally. Right. When the steer come tight, the way it went up his neck, it kind of pulled it high and, and my hand went under it. Uh -huh. And so it kind of, where it kind of trapped me was when it pulled it like this, it had my, my reins trapped sure. down. So I kind of... Like whenever, you know, you miss your slack, mm -hmm. I just try to go yeah. that way because, you yeah. know, it's at least over or get on top of it, yeah. you know. And, uh, I was, once I got a hold of it, you know, you see a lot of people, and then I'm guilty of this too, kicking too far ahead. Right. Yeah. And trying to hold your slack way up and then try to back right, up and sure. get a dally. Well, after, you know, I knew we weren't going to probably win anything. Yeah. Really what I had in my head was just ease up enough to uh -huh. where he was starting to go try to just lose a leg and get it right, right on one foot <clears throat> and then worry about dallying. And then uh, I just kind of hit it, hit it just right to where yeah. when I did take a step forward, he was just standing there and I got a dally and right, sure. lucky enough to keep two feet. But uh, I was just trying yeah. not to get in no time. You know? And usually, you know, if you got two feet, it seems like usually you're at least going to lose one of them, you know, right, like yeah, if not both, lot, you know. And that's, that's all I was, was I was just great. trying to ease up enough to where yeah. if I did lose a foot, I could get it tight on sure. one to where I wouldn't lose or cause it no time. And then worry about getting dallied yeah, yeah that, that could be one of the runs that when it's all said and done you look back on right that won me the world championship yep. not panicking oh or, yeah exactly i've seen that happen a lot in my case just 
Well, like Jake Barnes last night, yep. uh, he was one of the last teams out, and his go-around was really tough. And uh, he ran him down there and set him up for junior. And Anyway, I kind of thought that was a pretty – the right, and, smart move. Yeah, smart for move sure. because uh, still in the average, good. And yeah. So you got to keep in mind that yeah. ten go rounds. Yeah, at the moment it's probably pretty spooky, but you know, over ten runs, it's a long week out there. You know, like I was saying, that could have made the could, can make the difference. You know, that kind of deal. Guys, I could sit here and talk to you all day, and we'd never even get to this deal. So I was going to let everybody know that uh, they'll talk for a while, and then probably ask for some questions. Mm -hmm. You know, they're more than happy to answer them. So. Guys, I appreciate y'all being with us. It's an honor to have you, Alan, and Jade. I'm going to let y'all have it. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. I, basically, I was going to let, uh, you know, everybody, uh, Facebook, social media, everything, talk about who's the best basketball player, who's the best roper, header, healer. But, and me being my age, I'm, I'm grateful that there's no jealousy deal now. I get to be friends with all the greatest ropers, healers, but I mean, he's undoubtedly who everyone thinks is the best healer in the world. And what I wanted to kind of open up and let you guys ask some questions after a while, but have Jade talk a little bit about different parts of the run. And um, we were going to try to bring out like fundamentals are so important. I mean, obviously that's why we're here. We're talking a little bit about, you know, our product, the Smarty and uh, how you can practice your fundamentals. But when you hear Jade talk basically about position, swing, his timing, his delivery, the guy that executes the fundamentals the best will be the best. He'll be the fastest, most consistent guy going. So I was gonna basically just open it up by asking Jade, I mean, everybody marvels at your horsemanship about your ability to come out, stay away from the steer, but yet be right in position when you need to. How did you get started with that? Well, <clears throat> how, how I kind of got started was uh, when I was younger, I used to use a pretty big loop. And uh, just for some reason, kind of always my comfort zone was, I didn't, I was always comfortable being away from the cow. Like I, I never had to get so close that I knew they were right there. I wasn't. I wasn't really worried about them getting away from me. And uh, <clears throat> you, I have a lot of people ask me, or when you see people rope, a lot of people want to get too close. Right. When the cow starts to turn, they think maybe, you know, they're going to get left. Well, to me, <clears throat> my whole life I've tried to come up with some kind of saying that works for all aspects of the game. Where the best, like the best way for me to learn about roping is to not talk about roping. Like when I, I have to come up with little sayings in my head that make sense to me, and it might not make sense to you or anyone else, but then eventually you come up with enough, you know, different little sayings that make sense, but it all goes back and it means the same thing, whether it's the way I think about it or the way you think about it. But the, the finally, the one thing I did come up with that no matter what you think of is if my truck breaks down <clears throat> and I'm gonna get towed, well, all you have to do when someone tells you is you worry about just keeping the chain tight. You don't want to get, let the chain get loose and then slam on the brakes and then jerk them or they take off and jerk you. So you might have to push on the brake or you might have to push a little harder on the brake. It doesn't matter what you have to do as long as the chain stays tight. Because I, I kind of got stuck in the, you know, the better I got and the more I kind of learned about healing and what we call correct, I tried to get to where I would no matter what happened, get to that spot and try to make that kind of shot. Well, sometimes that doesn't work, you know, whatever type of go you get. And uh, I started kind of, that's kind of what, I started going backwards because no matter what the steer did, I was, I knew the spot I wanted to get to and the spot I wanted to throw from. And so it wouldn't be, you know, say keeping the chain tight, wouldn't do what I needed to do. <clears throat> so it's funny, I can relate exactly to what Jade is saying with little games that you play on yourself, this is maybe kind of the same thing as you're saying. I've always had this deal in my mind, because I'm like Jade, like our goal is to put the horse's shoulders and his hips lined up right to the left to where we can see that left leg, but not so far over here, but just where we can see that left leg. Well, everybody pretty much knows that. And what he said your comfort zone is, I've never been comfortable up there. 
And that's basically what you're saying, right? Right. Like, <laughs> well, and, and two, because the if you get here, it's there's no doubt if you get right here, the only thing that can happen now is you have to slow down. Yeah. Or your horse will stop because, mo I mean, most horses naturally don't want to just overrun the cow. So if you get right here, you automatically do this because you want to see the feet. Well, now your horse stops, the header pulls the cow away, and you're dead stopped, and you, then you lose. Yeah. You lose all your momentum. What, when <clears throat> I say it causes a domino effect, you lose your horse's forward momentum, your body posture breaks down, your swing breaks down, and you're forced into taking the shot right then. Right, right. And that's, that's, that's basically the, the reason I've done what I've tried to do as far as like how I ride the turn and stuff is, is I never want to be, I never want the cow or my position to tell me when to throw. I want to, I want to have it in enough control to where I'm ready to throw, but if it doesn't, the shot doesn't present itself, then I don't have to throw. And nothing, nothing changes. Nobody would even know I was wanting to throw because everything keeps going. And <clears throat> I kind of, the way I kind of think of that is just like when you're driving your car, if someone's directly in front of you, you're not gonna hit the car in front of you, you know, ideally. So you might let off the gas and you might see him stop. If, you, if all you do is watch the car in front of you, well then you might let off the brake in time and just have to ease to a stop or you might miss it a little bit and slam on the brake if you have to, but all you know is you don't hit the car in front of you. So kind of the like, it <clears throat> seems to me, and I've, I've done this a lot, and I still, one of the main things I work on is whenever I'm trying to especially work on something or if I get somewhere, certain arena where the spot I pick is not the right spot, well then I don't jump to the extreme. Like the U.S. Finals the other day, uh, steers that was kind of like here, they were really big, hitting kind of downstream. Well, the first day, like the prelim and stuff, a couple times I thought I was, you know, going to be in a good spot, and I got inside got inside again, got inside again. And so uh, the morning of the open shootout, all morning, that was the only really, only thing I had in my head was, I was just gonna head off to the announcer stand before I got inside that day. Well, the very first one, I kind of got where I needed to get. Well, when Clay turned him, you know, I, I felt the whole time like it was gonna be good. Well, kind of like the deal that was happening here, when he came pulling back, it kind of sucked him back to me and I, you know, I went by the steer a little bit, yeah. <clears throat> and so, but after that, I didn't go right to the cow the next time, and uh, kind of the way, you know, like the Olympic tracks that when they stack there, you know, they stagger the racers or whatever. The lanes. Whatever, yeah, but everybody runs, you know, I might be back here and you might be up there, but by the time we get to the turn, you know, we come to the same distance. So, you know, if you think of those lanes on that track, so I picked the very outside track, well, that was... A little too far so the next round I just went to the next track over I don't go three tracks over and then have to go back again and you know then get the the guessing game going and then by the time you find it well now it's already the fifth round and it's too late yeah. so <clears throat> the second round I picked the next track over and I hit my spot good so then I just stayed in that track the rest of the day and then you know I, I hit the right spot the rest of the day and then we end up winning the roping but uh, staying calm and just, you know, focusing on what you're doing and not panicking is the main thing to me, like, because if you get into the guessing game, then you go to fight in your head and nothing, nothing seems to go right. So just kind of like I was talking about the track deal, like if, if something isn't right, try to make it too far that way. You know, I don't, I don't ever want to start here and then try to work my way back. I start on the outside, try to work my way in, because as long as, kind of like I was talking about, if you get too close, when you get the stop and go, that's when body gets back, tip will get up, and then nothing ever feels good. So if the cow is a little bit too far in front of you, well, it's easy just to kind of, you know, scoot right to him, but you never lose your forward momentum and you can keep everything square. And moving to the cow is, you know, I, say, I would say night and day, but it's even, I think it's even bigger separation than that from getting too close, then too far away and trying to, you know, get too. going again. Like, I, this is something I've used a lot, like, coaching people. But when you guys uh, are riding, like, healing position down the arena, like, my rule of thumb or whatever is 10 foot wide and then just one stride back where I'm spotting the feet at, say, 10 o'clock right here. And most everybody has an unconscious thought in their mind to try to be exactly in the right position to rope the steer on the first jump, right? 
I mean, almost everybody, you would think that would be the, well, the, here's the way I look at that. It's like, if you're not an advanced guy with your healing on your position, you don't have a great left hand, um, you're going to make some mistakes. And if you're a little bit too close, you're going to pay the price, like what Jade and I have been talking about. So what I tell people is like, hey, let's, let's give a little room for error. I, w I don't want you to get in there until, like I want you to be one jump late. So that when you come in here, you're probably not going to be able to heal him on the first jump. But we're not going to, not very many guys heal him on the first jump anyway. But nothing bad happens. Your, your horse's momentum keeps flowing. Your body posture stays up. Your swing doesn't get broke down. You can see the feet really good. So everything flows and then you just move into position and you're able to rope him on the second or third jump. <clears throat> and I know, I know it's two different things, but the really the easy way that I've had a lot of people tell me it makes sense to them is I, I'll tell them think about it just as if you were the header. Because when the header leaves there, they're always, you know, we start behind the cow too far once you see the start. Well, then you ride to the cow, and then as you get there, you know, you rate accordingly, and you never, you don't pass the cow. <clears throat> so, if you think about the same thing, healing, if you just let, because where, I think where the a huge difference is, is a lot of people don't understand how, how much time you have, actually. From the time the head rope goes on, that's usually when you see a lot of healers' left hands do this. Well, from the time the head loop goes on until the time they actually take the first jump away from you. Uh, my dad the other, or the other day was, uh, was getting too close, getting too close. And so we, went, we watched some videos and I told him, or even when we were practicing, I said, when the head loop goes on, start counting, you know, one, two, three, and then stop when you think the first jump is that he's legal to heal and actually pulling away from me. And it was between you know, four to five, three to five, really? you know, every single time. So you have to be far enough away. If you want to keep the same momentum, you have to be, you know, trust that that's going to happen every time. Because even, you know, even if somebody like here or rodeo or whatever, if your header ropes the cow and their horse ducks and they hit him as hard as they can possibly hit him, there's still yeah. hesitation right there before they go away. Yeah. And, and so it, that's, you know, that's, that's one key point that you, know, you need to keep in your head because no matter what happens, that happens every single time. And so if, you're, you know, if there's ever a feeling where I feel like I'm too far away, I just get, or like I was talking about, go too far the other way, not too close. Like when I leave there, because I, I hear a lot of people tell me uh, that it looks like I do the same thing every time. <clears throat> and to me, like before, like when I was younger and stuff and, and leading up to now, like, I never really said anything because I didn't know, I didn't want to sound stupid or I thought I was probably wrong about it because I, to myself, I felt like I did something different every time. But the spot I'm aiming for was the only thing that's the same. The route I take to get there feels like it's literally different every single cow I wrote. But I never, you know, until I got to the point where I was thinking or could understand it more and, and thought that maybe that was what they were talking about, I never really talked about it or, or said anything. But... I just leave the box and I get to the, I get to a point where like I, I just kind of, I live it, I do it off lines, say there's one line over there that once you cross it, you are, you know, there's a, there's a minimum and then on that side of it, it doesn't matter how far you go. It can be too far or whatever, but once you cross that line, you're definitely far enough. So I just kind of try to cross that line every time and make sure I'm far enough away. And then if something happens and I feel like I'm too far, well, then I'll start easing that way, but I don't, like I was talking about going to the extreme, I don't just take off and go right towards the cow. I'll just kind of start easing, so it'll look like I'm headed to him, because I am, but I'm, I'm just moving, you know, one track over, one track over, and then when I feel the feel that I'm looking for, well, then that's when I'll, you know, lock it in and then stay on the same track and, and find my spot, but that's a... What I like, <laughs> what, well, I like what Jade's saying there is that Everybody's looking for a formula, you know, an exact, an exact time to go in there. And what I'm hearing out of Jade is the feel that I've always had all my life. But it's like uh, my peripheral vision helps me a lot. And as, as I'm watching and trying to react to this corner, it's like as this corner develops, 
everyone is a little bit different. I mean, there's no way that a header can handle everyone the same. So I've got to react to this and try to, to like the way I almost look at it, like a plane that's, that's out there kind of biding its time, you know, on the flight pattern, waiting to move in. I'm, I'm out here trying to wait to where I can just keep my momentum going with my horse and then just fit in there right when I need to fit in there. But what I thought was interesting in watching Jade when he, the last five or six years as he just evolved into roping as good as he did is he wasn't afraid to get out here wider. And I thought that was interesting because I've watched all the great healers all my life. And none of us have ever done that. And I started experimenting with it without even asking him why, you know. But I found my horse like really wanting to get in there from this position. And the more I would get him out here, the more disconnected my horse would come from the run. And he would really listen to my hand good. And it just felt neat to be able to uh, disconnect him, have the horse listen to me. I could get him collected. And then I could, like Jade said, you can go ahead and start in there a little earlier if you can see that things are going to get away from you. And then start rolling in there. And you have so much more room to get squared up and get your horse's shoulders and hips right. But you have to get over the phobia of getting your pants jerked down. I mean, everybody, you know, being left in the hot dog stand. Every once in a while, they'll stick it on one and leave you. And I swear, that one time that you get left behind, you chase him across the arena, you'll be in early the rest of the day. Or the re I see guys nodding their head. We all do that. So you really got to deal with that, that anticipation thing in your mind. Like here at the NFR, well, we even talked about it last year about you were getting in a little early, right? Yeah, uh, no, that's, and that's, you know, especially here is, is something that, I mean, this is something that I continuously work on every day, and it's still hard to do because of, especially a place like this when you know, I know standing here right now that tonight we're going fast, you know what I mean? And so it's hard to, the anticipation is, is hard not to, to let yourself start leaking, but that, that's just where, you know, your focus and your, and your, you know, say mental preparation, you just have to, like, I'm a, I'm a big believer in if something works for you and it's the right thing, well, then just trust that. You have to trust that and you have to just believe that, that that's the way it is and, and stick with it because I, I've never understood this and I'm as guilty as anybody. Why we always try to fight off our first initial instinct, even when we know, because the biggest you know, statement or question that I get all the time is, man, I've been roping so good at home, and then I go to the roping and I do something different. Why, you know what I mean? Like, if, Why do you if do what, that? Yeah, so, because they say, if you're roping good at home, well, then that means what you've been doing is working or say the right thing. So that's, that's what you need to stick with. So if you go to the roping and you do something different, well, that, that means every practice run that you made at home was basically a waste of, you know, you, when you, if you show up to the Roping and do something different, then you haven't practiced at all. You just showed up to the Roping and, and you tried something new that day. So working on it at home, like, be, be okay with, like, what we're talking about. If you, if you do mess it, I'm perfectly okay with myself if, I'm, if I mess up on that side of the line because I can work my way back in right up to the line, just can't cross it. So that, that's kind of an easy, you know, when you, when you pick your line out there, if, if we're running straight down the arena this way, and I say that this, this is my line right here that's too close, well then, it should be easy to stay off the cow because here's our line. That's, that's perfect. That's bullseye position. So if, if we start out here, well then we can start easing, 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 and then by the time we hit our line, if we, if we don't cross it, well then we're still okay. <clears throat> but that's where you see a lot of people jump to the extreme if they get, because I see a lot of people, they'll come rope or whatever and they'll try it. Well, they'll head off out that way. Well, as soon as they hit the peak of where they, where they stop, they just immediately go, almost turn their horse this way and just charge right towards the cow. <clears throat> and that, that, that's, where, that's where you just have to be, like I, I try to go, that's why I rope slow steers when I practice it. A lot of guys don't understand why I like making real time runs is, something that I hardly ever do. Like, <clears throat> I rope steers at my house that are just, you know, medium to slower, and I go through the steps, make sure I do it right. 
because if I, like, how I kind of explain that deal is just like when you guys leave here, if you're going to go to a hotel and you, and you don't know where it's at, if you're driving too fast when you get to the road, once you see it, we well, don't have time to get slowed down, you blow by the road. <clears throat> but if you're driving five miles an hour, even if it's, you know, if you're annoyed by it and you're going too slow, well, all of a sudden you see the road, you can turn in because you were going slow enough that you see it. Yeah, more reaction time. Right, yeah, and, it, and, it, and to me it just works on, like, it, it's practice for me to slow it down and make sure, because, like, to me there's a reason that, just like last night, say, you make a four-second run or three-second run, well, the stuff that I, I see during that run takes way more time. If you give me four seconds to talk about it, I wouldn't even get to, I wrote in the box, and then it's over, you know. So, so that means to me that, that our, our minds, we can un, you know, unprocess time, and you can, you can break it down and slow it down to whatever speed you want if you have enough mental control to just see it one step at a time and not, not jump ahead and try to come back. Well, then you go too far back because the steer's past that point. Well, now you go to looking for it. Well, now you should have already thrown. So the, the driving, like you don't know where you're going, is something that makes sense to a lot of people that uh, go slow enough until you don't miss the turn because eventually, like right now when you leave here and go to your house, you don't get lost and you can drive as fast as you want because you know exactly where you're headed. You know when to get slowed down in time, you know when to make the turn. So don't, don't get, everybody and myself included, when we start working on something, we want results and we want to get better and do better. But it's just like to me, growing up, you can't, it goes day by day and you can't speed it up, can't slow it down. So treat your open the same way when you're learning something, is just go day by day. Yesterday, you went slow enough to not miss the turn. Well then today, if you still need to drive that slow, then just be okay with it, keep driving that slow so you don't miss the turn and then eventually you'll get to where you know exactly where you're headed and you can drive as fast as you want because you know when to let off the gas and know when to get turned in, so. How, 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 how big a deal is the mental aspect of roping and winning? Um, like I always explain, you got the mechanics of roping, your horsemanship, but you got the mental in the middle of it. And isn't it interesting how, like Jade is talking mostly about mental stuff, right? Um, um, mental things that, like word pictures that he's seeing that helps him to deal with it, uh, not, not being anxious, discipline, going slow, building his uh, subconscious to where when, when he is in that situation, going really fast, he's able to make the right moves. Uh, I mean, that's interesting for me even to listen to him. But I can relate to a lot of the same things because of, we, we've done the, I've done it all my life. And having to watch Clay Cooper and what, how, what a great mind he had and the concentration he has, and then watching other great healers. Um, I mean, it just keeps confirming to me about fundamentals and the right way of doing it. Uh, anybody have any questions about this particular part of it, riding the corner? You guys all hear the question there? It wasn't really a question, it's a comment, and it's a great comment. And I run into that a lot, it's like uh, somebody that's trying to haze a steer, and they, they get out a little bit too high, and they're trying to keep that steer straight for the header, the next thing they know, they're in a the bad position. You wanna? <clears throat> yeah, that, that to me, like, if, uh, going back to what I was talking about, like, just keeping the chain tight, say, and going, going off the line, well, the steers that say they come right, well, there's, there's the, the certain spot where if you can't, you know, there's the point you'll stop the cow and there's the point you might be able to hold him. Well, if they get past, you know, hits the point where you can't stop him, well, here's the fence. Well, don't now stay, stay behind the line this way because there's a certain point where you have to let your head a rope. So that's just keeping the chain tight. You, you try to do your job as good as you can. If one comes right, you get pinched off on the fence, well then you just hold position this way, let them turn the cow, and that, that's what, it, you know, 99% of the time, they turn the cow, here we come right in the V, right towards the head, where that's where I try to, 
like I, I try to just slow down this way. I'll hold, hold, hold. And when I, when I explain it, I talk about holding, holding your spot and not, okay, so if I get pinched off to the right, this is where I would be, say, when the cow turns. So I talk about, right, instead of coming this way, cutting off and coming across, and getting your horse kind of, say, shouldering in, well, I say go up, if this is point A and that's point B, pretend like there's a, or there's, there's a, another line right here that you can't cross. So you've got to go up until the line ends and turn in right where you know you were going to be because the way it ends up working is if you just hold position right here, when he starts pulling him, it makes it to where you get up there by not actually getting up there. Really, we do come across this way, but you have to wait long enough until the cow pulls enough by you. So now if he gets, say, where the shorty's head is right there, well, now I'm almost at point A. One more stride, now I, now I went past the line and now I'm pushing towards the cow. So it's kind of, kind of an illusion, but the, way, the best way to think about it is to picture it in your head like you've got to wait, still go up there, and still make, still make the yeah, same turn. It is. Yeah. It's kind of an illusion because we're used to waiting a certain amount of time before we go in there. And when you have to back off and that steer gets on the fence on you, you literally have to wait another whole jump. I've got to just bide my time, wait a whole jump. And like Jade says, go ahead and ride up the arena when your horse is naturally going to want to cut in there and get, drop his shoulder and cut the corner. You've got to use your leg and your hand and go one more and ride that fence one more and let him get away from you. But if you're up here, there's an extreme there and there's an extreme there got to stay in the middle like you said and there's a ditch on both sides of everything well, and, and really yeah. oh sorry go ahead go ahead well <laughs> that's it, a tough it's a tough shot huh yeah, the, the steers that do that, like, there, there are certain things where, like, a steer that does what you're talking about, there are certain things where it's almost impossible to hit the right spot or, or make it feel good, you know what I mean? Like, every, everything we say and talking about, there, there's a, also a, a line of where if I've done all that I can do to set up my shot, and if you do all that, and then say a steer is doing what you're doing. Well, now you've got to, you've done all you can do, and now you got to just try to do the best you can for the situation that you're in, because that that's that's one thing that that I think, and, I, and I'm not saying it's it's bad or anything, because whatever level you are, there's there's a certain level that needs to talk about it and do it. But then it seems like every, you know, once you get past a certain level, you hear the same stuff because what what a lot of people like when they do demonstrations or or do schools and stuff and talk about. We all talk about where we want to get right here, where we want to swing, how you want to throw, do all that stuff. Well, once you can do that, that shot right there very rarely gets, we very rarely get that shot. Like the, the, the perfect go, the perfect, perfect shot, perfect steer hardly ever happens. And when it does happen, we can do that. So talking about how to set up, you know, runs like you're talking about, I think kind of gets, you know, put on the back burner, and that's the one that I think should be in the lead, probably, because that's where people have the most trouble. But like me, and uh, if, if one does kind of hit and take off running, usually when the head rope goes on, they kind of, you know, start heading that way. So if I have one that does that, you know, as soon as it happens, you can kind of see it coming. Well, now you need to kind of head, just go ahead and go. You know what I mean? As long As long as you are... Like, I just, I literally just, whatever the cow does, I try to keep in my head. I'm just one track behind him going the same, same route he's making. He's in this track. I'm in the next track, next, one of the next two tracks over, and I want to stay. I don't want him to get ahead of me. He's ahead of me, but when we make the turn, we've gone the same distance. So, <clears throat> say... I don't, know, I don't know the distance that they stagger people on those tracks that they do it, but the guy in the next lane or the next lane over, wherever they're staggered at on the track, distance from me, that's the distance I want to keep the whole time down the arena. 
Because then, even if he's, it looks like he's over there, by the time we get halfway around the track and hit the corner, we'll be the same distance. So just if they head that way and start to run up the rope, then you need to head that way. And then if they end up hitting, just stay right there or stay in your lane. You know, and, and that's, it's hard to explain because <clears throat> to, or it'll, it'll get to a point where it makes more sense and it's easier for you. But you, you have to just get in your head and be okay with no matter what they do, just do the same thing in your lane. You know, because that, you know, if you, if you go too early, well then even though he's running up the rope, you can still get too close or hit it wrong. Well now when he shoots by you, he's, he was going really fast. Well if you stop and he's going really fast, now there's almost, you know, you're, the percentage of you catching just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as he goes away and you're a dead stop. The, the main, the only way to keep uh, any chance of you catching up is you gotta be moving with him. Because or the good way to think about that is if, if the cow's running 20 miles an hour and I'm running 20 miles an hour, well then it's just like me and this dummy, it's a still target. Say, 20 and 20, even though we're moving and moving fast, my target is not getting away from me. I'm staying, he's staying the same distance away from me. So if, if he runs around the corner going 20, and as you get to watching it, you kind of slow down to 16, well now he's gaining on you the whole time. Or if you hit 22 miles an hour or 23 miles an hour, at a certain point you're going to catch up and then you'd go too far. You know what I'm saying? If he, if he keeps going 20. So that, that's kind of a, a way that I gauge. I just, it's all just kind of, just, it's just kind of paying attention and just, just gauging the, you know, the, the speed that he's going, the speed that you're going to where that, that when I said don't hit the car in front of you, just get as close as you can without hitting it. Here's a suggestion, too, that I try to do at the, our schools, but I try to create different scenarios like the one that she's created there. A lot of people really struggle with that. and It's a, it's a hard horsemanship deal because it's basically saying, if I turn the smarty and give you a pretty good corner, but then I go back up the arena pretty fast and I win him on you, we're going down the arena maybe 12, but I start, I just keep increasing speed. What do you, what's your ability? I mean, what do you have to do to be able to ride your horse up into position? You keep your body posture, or that's what I think about. I keep my rope speed going and I really use my legs and I practice, like this is something you could practice. Like I could give you like five turns to where I speed the smarty up on you and you can practice accelerating your horse up there and catching up and it takes a little bit of the panic away so that when you get it like a real steer that does that you know that you have the ability to just go from 12 miles an hour right to 18 miles an hour and you're not leaning over you're not chasing the steer with your arm or your body i know you're nodding your head i do the same thing i've caught myself chasing that steer that runs up the rope and i'm just like that right there then I watch a guy like him, he just sits up there and he's one minute he's going 12 miles an hour, and the next minute he's going 18 miles an hour, but his body hasn't changed, his swing hasn't changed. But that's just something a guy should practice. You should practice coming around and having someone give you like a slow corner, keeping off of, you know, learn to collect your horse and stay away from the corner. And then I think that you should practice also where steers are running up the rope. So you can practice that so that you can be ready for anything when you when you start roping live cattle somebody else got a question here here was something I was wanting to do real quick this kind of falls into what Jade was saying about uh, he does not want to be too close same with me I never did I don't know if very many people realize this but there's kind of like two deliveries like, when I'm here healing a steer, I never really have to break my tip of my rope too, too much. I can just come out of my swing, and I can extend my hand down, and I don't have to break the tip. But when you're constantly getting in too close, it's like you have to learn for a shot like this to break your tip in. That's two different deliveries, right? So I always, I mean, it was kind of an unconscious thing, but it was like, I put this barrier out here, like, kind of like Jade is saying, a mental game. 
I'm not going to break the barrier. When I come in to position myself for a steer, if my horse's chest gets in too close, I've broke the barrier. I've even had like Joel, Tyler, when they get, they break the barrier, they got to get off and give me 20 push-ups just as a discipline deal to quit getting in too close. And I guarantee if you had to get off and do 20 push-ups every time that you allowed your discipline to come down and you just rode in on top of the steer, I mean, you'd, you'd start using your left hand. But here's like, for me, me knowing that I can rope a steer out away from me better, it makes it easier for me not to panic and get on top of him. There's my, for me, that's my favorite shot. And what would be like your second favorite shot? No one ever says this stuff, but this is this kind of my own way of doing it. If I can't be in the perfect spot, would I rather be too close or too far back? Too close to me is a different delivery and I gotta break my tip. But if I'm just a little too far back, what, what do I have to do? I, di I just bend at the waist a little bit and it's the same shot. Only I've just, now I've, instead of using my arm, I use my waist and my arm. And I have that much more reach. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so I'm a realist. I, I might not always be able to be in exactly the perfect spot, but I would rather here or even here, this is something Jade and I talked about last summer about steers that move out away from you. When I'm teaching people to deliver, I'll have them stand over here just so that they won't panic. This is the same shot to me as this one here. Meaning, it's easy for me to come out of my swing and have my hand go around my elbow, keep my shoulder up good. And if anything, all the people that I've had where I tell them, well, step over here and throw a few loops. <clears throat> Anytime I have somebody do that, it's like they throw a better loop. Does anybody have a clue why that would be? When they get in here, they struggle throwing a good loop. But when you're over here, let's say, why would you throw a better loop from over here? Anybody guess? You're not bunched up with your swing. That's a, I mean, that, that was the answer, really, I'm looking for. You use your shoulder and your forearm more. You're not, you're not so bunched up. So over here, I know I've got to really use my arm, keep my shoulder up. And then I have a nice full delivery, okay? But the, it's kind of like that panic of getting in on top of steers. We don't realize, look what you're doing to yourself. Now you're making yourself have the, the hardest delivery of all. Can't see the feet very good. You know, you're, you're leaning back. So for me, I started developing a, a confidence thing. Like, I can, even at the Thomas and Mac, I've been bragging on him. I'll brag on myself a little bit here. I always thought there wasn't anybody that could get one away from me at the Thomas and Matt because of my height and stuff and my ability to be able to like reach and rope one like that. So that helped me with my patience. Does that make any sense? Yeah. It helped me with my patience factor. And I would stay, stay away, stay away, stay away to the last minute. And I'd still be able to reach and rope one. And because of it being that little arena, the, the healers that rope best in here do what he does. They keep their spacing good out around them like that. Well, and, and that was the one thing I wanted to talk about <clears throat> when you brought it up was the swing to me is that that's the most important thing of, of everything we've talked about. I mean, the, where you go and the position, everything is important, but a lot of where you will, you know, you, where you'll ride your position to me is off of my swing because it's, it's just like, that's, that's our crosshairs and that's our target. So if, if you're aiming, you know, no matter how far, if you're shooting a gun, no matter how far whatever you're shooting is away from you, you put the crosshairs on your target. So if, if wherever my target is in the arena, if I've got my crosshairs on him, well then that's leading me, you know, naturally right to where he's at. And, and something that... I like that. Uh, <laughs> something that I see a lot of people do is, is a header, say, <clears throat> when a header comes across the line, they, they get their tip up. They make sure they got it up above the horns. And then as they get closer, 
drop it down to where they wanted to swing. Well, if a healer does that, because I'm, I'm big on, I, the delivery has to come right out of your swing. I want, I want to swing, when, the point, when I hit the point where I've either got to take another swing or let go, that's exactly, that's what I want my delivery to be. So if, I'm, if I get it up and to the left, say, well, when I turn in, if I come right out of that, that's where it goes. <clears throat> so if, I, if, that's, if that's what I'm doing, if I pick it up, you see a lot of people want to get it over here to the left. Well, if I turn in and that's where it's at, those are all wasted swings because now if he's ready to be healed, I can't heal him from right there. I got to get it over here to where my target's at, which takes too long. So the, a way that I, or how I figured that out was I stood right here where I wanted to heal the dummy from, got my swing, <clears throat> just kept swinging, pretend like I backed up and turned down the arena with that swing right there. And then I just did that enough to where, you know, when you do something enough, it'll, it'll just kind of become natural to you. So now when I'm riding down the arena, when I pick it up, it looks like it's left because it is because the, the cow I'm healing is going that way. So I'll pick up my swing to where when I turn in, I don't change anything. And that's the, that's the swing that I'm going to heal the cow with. So if, he's, if I hit my position right and he's ready to be healed, well, all I got to do is let go. <coughs> and Let me pull this out of the way. I'll let you demonstrate on the... Can you, where's uh, Seth at? What do you want to do? Oh, what he's saying is like so good. I mean, it's actually the first time we broke it down together and there's so many things he's saying that just relate, I relate to, kind of think about it the same way. But like swing, swing like uh, over, we'll pretend like the, this is a steer coming down the arena and then show him where, when you said crosshairs, I've thought about, uh, you know those jets? Where, where them guys try to put, what do they call that when, yeah, when you're locked on. Right. You guys, you probably think we're crazy standing up here. But you know when they lock on on a jet, and he's talking about the crosshairs, what we're talking about is like, he's standing over here where his breakover is, his angle is, where the tip is. That's like locking on like that jet or them crosshairs. And he's got his hip break over an angle perfect before he even turns well and, and another thing before we do this too it's this is another part that's kind of an illusion but you can't when you you know when going down the arena when i pick up my rope i want it okay well, i if you look at the hondu that's what leads your tip say okay? so if i pick it up and my hondu is going at al that means <clears throat> my swing is going on that side of the cow when i turn in it'll be on that side. So running down the arena, no matter my distance, when I pick it up, I want it, my Hondu will be swinging, say below the feet at first. I'll just pick it up, make sure I got that. <clears throat> and then as I start, he start turning, well now it's going to the hawk, to the hawk. And if I get closer, it goes to the flank. And then to his front shoulders, the closer I get, because that's where the illusion part comes in. Because the closer I get to the like cow, if I drop it down right here to keep it at the hawk, well now you can't swing like that. And then when you cow goes away and your horse shuts down, a lot of people don't uh, remember to factor in that our angles change. When our, when our horse backs off to throw and the cow gets pulled away, your angle drops down. So <clears throat> it's kind of like, say, shooting clay pigeons to come, or a bird flying in front of you. If you shoot it right at the bird, well, he's going to get by bullet goes behind him so you kind of just you have to lead it kind of like we're talking about the deal on the track to where you always you're going the same distance and you end up meeting in the middle so a good way like if uh when you're talking about steers that pinch you off on the ride or whatever if you get pinched off over here and this is where you're at well then you just got to bring it that much steeper keep it on <clears throat> keep your angle right angle right and then you can move it up you know as you get closer to the cow because if if we have it too high uh like when i was talking about a header if a header has it where we want it when they get to the cow well now the tip's putting or pushing right towards the back of the head so when they pick it up 
they might pick it up like uh, if you watch Caleb Driggers picks it up really high at first, but he just makes sure he gets it up, and then as he gets there, keeps it above the horns to where he makes a shot. So if a healer does that, we pick it up too high. If we get too close, the only way to catch now is we have to turn our hand over so much that now our bottom strand is going to run. <clears throat> so if we, if you just make sure that we, we go the, the opposite way of a header. Header goes up to down, we go down to up. If you make sure it's down, when you lock in over here and hit this point, now you either can stay with it or you can roll your hand forward if you needed to get a little higher, but you can't go from up here and roll it down if you're too close. So that's, that's, what, that's one thing that it's, it's kind of easy to think of is wherever you're watching, because it's hard to see your tip when you're swinging, but you can see the hondu. So swinging your hondu at your target, <clears throat> that, if, if you think about that, that's what leads the tip. So that's, that's one, the one thing I see a lot of people do the most is when they pick it up, they want to get it up here and then try to drop it, drop it, drop it. Well, if you're a header, that's good. Healer, that's bad. Because <clears throat> if, uh, if a steer is getting away, like we were talking about, that's, that's the one thing that uh, when we were talking about position-wise, if you're okay with being over here, well, you can, you know, you can reach him from quite a ways away because uh, like when you're talking about the steers that if they roll around the corner and they're taking off on you, even if he's, if he's this far away and I think I can rope him from that distance, well then all I got to do is get going the same speed he is. So, or when I was talking about them being a still target as long as they're going the same speed, <clears throat> even if he's, you know, say an uncomfortable distance for you away, if you just get to go on the same speed as him, well then if you can reach him from there, you know, it, it feels the same as if you get right to where you want to get and are going the same speed. Does that kind of make sense? Or, and then once you, you know, if you do it enough and kind of <clears throat> get to where it's comfortable, no matter what happens, it will all feel the same kind of. I, I know it's kind of hard to well, more uh, people, visualize or whatever. But. More people will tell you, I always seem to do better if I have to reach for my cattle. And then almost well, everybody will admit, I don't do good if I get too close. So that's a lot of what Jade's saying there too, is like if you, that phobia of being, not being able to reach them, like that helped me a lot, knowing that if I'm not in that perfect spot, I could still reach out there a little bit further and still make an easy shot. Anybody have a question though about what Jade was explaining there? We've got just a couple more minutes. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to get in before we're done is, is when he was talking about the left hand, that, that's, the, that's the one thing that I think a lot of people don't, don't realize is how much our left hand affects everything we do. Uh, because if, if you do get far away from one, you can't set your, your loop down this far away from the cow. You have to throw it to get it there. Well, then everybody thinks their loop's going to just frisbee through and the bottom strand never hits the ground. So <clears throat> if you... If you use your left hand right, if I, if I just throw it, that's where it hits. But if there's a certain point where if you throw it and you use your left hand, the reason our rope, the way it uncoils like that as it's going, if you have enough control of it and know when to stop it, you can drop your bottom strand with your left hand. So if I throw it out there, see how it looked almost like normal heel loop. Well, that's the same kind of things I do if I get, say, get a long ways away from the cow. Well, you throw it. See right there how I was going to catch the cow, drop my bottom strand down. That's all left hand. So that's, that's, uh, that's just one thing I wanted to tell everybody is that don't, don't abandon, when you lock, you want to lock the elbow in, push your horse around the corner, but you never want to get to, don't, don't abandon your left hand because that's, that's the most important thing. <clears throat> uh, to I've, seen, over I've the right. seen Clay Cooper a lot, like have his left hand involved. In right. Well, and then and like this, this is a good example of what we talked about keeping the chain tight, because you have to have. You see a lot get get to right here. Well, if you swing <clears throat> with your, if you don't have enough in between your hands, 
you're swinging right here. Well, if you need to rein your horse this way, your hand cup, yeah. that pulls your hand that way. <clears throat> so, but the only way, if you have enough between your hands and you throw it with it when it's loose, that's when you get that deal. So, like, there's a lot of runs. Uh, well, even here, like the, I think it may be the second night, you can see it pretty good. Like, there, there'll be runs where when I go to throw, I'll bring my left hand, you know, I'll, I'll feed or bring my left hand back to keep this, you know, tight to where we have the tension on it. Well, then when I throw, bring the left hand forward and then back again. Yeah. Like, it'll, it'll go back and forward to back when my right hand's just going, yeah. you know, forward. Because you have to, you pull it back. Then you, you know, that's just when we talk about keeping the chain tight, that's where you keep the control. Um, shoot, we only got about five minutes. Everybody asks me this question. You, you take a shot at this, but as far as like the smarty, and we can be honest or whatever, the only reason that you agreed to work with me on the smarty was because of horsemanship. But everybody asks like, why didn't we make it hop? Why do you, why do you like it? <clears throat> And then the fact that it doesn't hop. Well, to me, the, in the past, the ones that actually had a dummy that hops one time and it broke. And so I kept roping it. Well, then I got to, it felt way better, felt way better. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if there's a way to make a dummy hop, you know, like an actual cow. Whether it's, you know, machine, ground driven, whatever it is. If it hits a bump or, you know, kind of, they'll take some phony hops or do, or do whatever. What, what I felt or what was happening to me was I'm trying to get in time where like when I rope a steer, I let, I let just the rhythm of the run and the steer get me in time, you know? And so if the rhythm of the dummy is not the, the rhythm that we want, well then what happened to me was I'd be looking for it and then pretty soon here comes my hand. Uh, I can't whoever said that they get their hand pulled, you know, right here, right here and you get bunched up. That's, that was what was happening to me is that I was like trying to, because if you, if you get quick hopped or something, your natural instinct is to try to stay in time with it. So the only way for me to feel good and my horses feel good and this, like I'll do some drills where <clears throat> I'll let the dummy get out there and I'll lope or run or do whatever after it, but I never heal it uh, across the arena. Like once it turns and I'm gonna go heal it, I always have them slow down into me and I heal it at a trot, and I let me ride my horse at a trot. I let me be the, I do the hopping, I guess, is basically what I'm, what I'm saying, because that way I can get that same rhythm as what I'm gonna do, you know, roping a real steer in. Where you don't float it, you don't jam it. Right, because I, I would get to where, not only pulling my swing in too tight, when I would see an opportunity, like I would try to, you know, knife it in there, and that, <clears throat> I see, I see a lot, what, what you can't do, the only way to come out of your swing, when it gets out here, this, this is our swing. So if we're gonna come out of that, into our delivery, we can't swing it like that. The only way to swing it is you have to pull, you have to pull the tip somewhere. So for me, I basically, <clears throat> I take a half a swing. So I pull it across the feet, well, then when I get over here, I let the momentum, or the momentum take it to where that's my delivery. Because if I pull it back this way, it's just like, a, say, a bull whip. If I pull it this way, pull it back this way, when the tip hits out there, only thing it has to do is it peters out and it's going to fall. Only way to get it back over here, pull it back again, well, then your tip gets left behind. So I pull it and then let the momentum, or momentum carry it around into my delivery if your swing's in the right spot. So that's because you see a lot of people turn their hand over or to me, at the, if you're going to shake someone's hand at any point of it, swing, delivery, that right there is as far as you can go that way. Bottom, because that's your top strand, that's your bottom strand. So you, can, you never want your top strand to be behind the bottom. So shake, shaking someone's hand or that way if you need it, but that's, that's the limit right there as far as that way. So that, that'll stop turning the hand over like that when you're swinging, I try to bring it dead flat across the feet, and then I just let the momentum carry it around as my delivery. So pull it, and I never, I never take it that way. So then finish, <clears throat> finish like that. 
the Al, Al got mad at me this year at Hermiston because I wouldn't do this. Remember? What were you doing? With the slack. Because everybody I rope the dummy with, <clears throat> when I rope it and heal it, my hand ends up over here. Well, every person that I've had rope the dummy with me, their hand stops, say, like, you were going to grab your slack like a calf roper. <clears throat> well, to me, which, and, I, and I'm not saying we don't do this when we actually rope, but just for me to not make, or not take any shortcuts, if I let go and my hand ends on top of my slack, that means I let go before, or I, I, I still had room to hang on to it. Because <clears throat> as long as we got a hold of it, that's, that's the loop we got. As soon as we let go, it continues to get smaller. So in my head, I want to hang on to it. I want, I want this loop that I have to be that loop as long as it possibly can. <clears throat> so if I hang on to it to the point where I either got to let go or take another swing, when, it, when I open my hand, it comes out the bottom of it. And then when I was talking about using the left hand, if, I, if I'm on this side of it and it is going that way in my left hand, pushing it that way lifts the top strand back out. If I go over the top of it, <clears throat> this way, my left hand goes under and lifts the loop just like we wanted to hit. Does that make sense? Or, or no? I haven't broke that down with you, so I, <clears throat> I'm not quite with you there. If I hold on to it right there. The, the, main, the main thing I, I think that people really struggle with is they see, uh, you guys will all see pictures of us with our hand turned down, correct? And that's because of a uh, camera, the shutter speed, and it's after we've thrown it. And what I just try to clear up is the fact that our hand is in this position when we're releasing it. And that's what helps me to control my bottom strand and set it in there. And then after I've released it, that's when I roll my hand over and get my slack. Like somebody that ties on wouldn't actually have to turn his hand over. You know, that's why I say, there's your delivery, there's your slack. Right. And, and it's, it's something that I do just for, you know, what we call over-exaggeration to where I don't get... Because I, I, until this to year... make sure you finish. Right. I haven't, I haven't roped a dummy for a long time until this year, uh, just because it's a still target. <clears throat> I don't like standing here and something not moving away from me. So that, but there's a certain, you know, there is a right way to do it, but for over-exaggerating, I will stand here, hold my loop, spin around, just to make myself get the feel Finish. of not. Once it locks in out here, don't get ahead of it, don't let it get ahead of you, just keep it all together one piece and, and Make sure you're keeping the same swing and you're doing it. We out of time. Like I said earlier, I could do this all day long. But ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for the world champs right here, Jade Corkill and Alan Bach. Thank you, guys. Y'all will probably be sticking. Jade, you got a minute to hang out for just a second? Or